What is up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Natural so Stupid Podcast. In today's episode, we will be interviewing Jeffrey Plotz, who is a communication master. He is going to share with us how you can be a more authentic and effective communicator. But first, a little more on Jeffrey. Uh, he is a dating and relationship coach with one mission, helping single men authentically attract their perfect, well-matched woman while setting the foundation for a thriving long-term partnership. And the way he does that is by helping you master being your authentic self and expressing that authenticity to the other person, which is obviously very valuable when you are looking for a significant other, but is just as valuable in every other relationship in your life, whether that's with your friends, with your parents, with your coworkers, your boss, any kind of relationship where you're looking to thrive, build, and create a positive connection. The skills and tools that Jeffrey's gonna talk about today are going to be valuable to you. He has over 25 years of personal study and transformational training, has led nearly 200 workshops and retreats on personal growth, dating, and communication, and has had his work and writing featured on the Huffington Post, the Washington Post, ABC News, Authentic Men Program, and the Good Men Project. So truly an expert in his field. Now, I learned a lot throughout this podcast. You're gonna hear me say I learned a lot and I'm learning a new thing as I'm talking to him because it's just so incredibly valuable. And if you know anything about communication, you know it is at the core of every, again, relationship, every uh, issue uh, that could arise in your life. So knowing how to master it, knowing how to be better at it is crucial for any human being that interacts with anybody. Excited for you guys to listen to this and let's just go right into it. So here is the interview with Jeffrey Platts. All right, Jeffrey Platts, welcome to the Not So Stupid Podcast. How are you doing today? Hey, what's up, man? Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Of course. I'm excited to have you on. You got a very interesting expertise. So for those of you unaware, <laughs> Jeffrey Platt is a dating and relationship coach for men, um, particularly specializing in authentic communication. So this is you know, not a very common job description that uh, people have, I think. How did you end up getting to where you're at? What's the story of Jeffrey right now? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, so basically, I've been into personal growth for, you know, since I was 17, which is, you know, a, a long time. And, um, and, and for the longest time I was into, you know, pretty much a lot of it, you know, spirituality, personal growth, you know, meditation, all that stuff. But then back in like early two thousands, I started really getting into like relationship, communication, sex, you know, I was into, um, you know, the pickup artist scene for a little while, you know, how, how PUA, which is how to, you know, seduce and meet and attract women, right. From that, from that lens. You know, the game was a big book uh, influence in that movement, but never really fully resonated with it. And so I started to diverge into other kind of teachers, you know, around relationships, you know, uh, Gay and Katie Hendricks, David Data, John Gottman, you know, um, those kinds of ideas that were felt more, a little more soulful, more grounded around connection and relationship. Because that was ultimately my goal, right, is I wanted to be in a long term relationship, not just hook up and, and date. Um, and then, so back in 2010, I did a, you know, a training around connection and communication and, and that kind of tied in with my own desire to look at coaching as a, as a possibility. And so I did a full year, like just pro bono coaching men, coaching women around all around dating, um, and started to get some, some good traction with, with clients and just started to just transition into a business. And so I've been doing this for about over 10 years now. And, um, and over the past, I think five or six years, I've focused solely on on men as my client base. I mean, obviously, the things we talk about today will apply to anyone and most, with, and if not any, and all relationships. Um, but that's who I currently serve: is, is guys that are single currently, are ready for a relationship and a long term partnership, and then, you know, helping them figure out what's in the way. You know, what's what what are they what are they doing or not doing? What are they seeing and not seeing? That's um, getting in the way of them meeting, connecting, building, building a relationship. Yeah, no, that's really awesome. The The thing I really want to point out first before we go forward is, you know, this podcast, like I told you before I got you on, it's mostly fitness and nutrition and personal development stuff. This is the first time we're having like a communication thing. So it's a little oh, different, cool. but, um, you know, communication, I feel like is the foundation of any good relationship, you know, uh, as coaches, you know, I'm sure you understand the way we communicate to people, the way they listen to us through this microphone really impacts how they're going to perceive ideas. So what is it about communication for you that you think um, most people might get, I don't want to say wrong, but might have the wrong perception of? Um, well, I think, well, one, I think it's, yes, communication is, is, is a hugely important part, right? It's almost like even in what you do, you know, if your personal training or your coaching or whatever, like that's communication, right? Like mm -hmm. 
there's always communication is embedded in our daily lives, right? It's like there's always communication of some sort going on unless you're living by yourself and don't interact with anybody. Um, but so for me, one thing that people get wrong and one thing that I've kind of, that I focus on a lot or, or, or a good decent amount of time is ways and skills of getting to a place of like shared reality, mm. right? And so what I mean by that is, um, you know, a very simple example for those who are watching this is like, I have a can in my hand, right? And, you know, this is a can of liquid. There's a can, it's one, you know, is, is, is it a can? And mm -hmm. then two, is it a can of, of soda or is it a can of mm -hmm. water? Is it a can of, you know, is it, is it name brand? Is it generic? Is right. it, um, could be tomato sauce, you know, could be yeah, beans. It's, or is this, you know, and so I'd be like, oh, that's a bottle. Maybe somebody, you know, like, oh, that's a bottle. No, it's a can. So like getting to a place where like you and I both see and experiencing the same thing. So there's like an essence of shared reality. Now that's a basic example, mm -hmm. but the other, you know, but in, in relationship dynamics, you know, say there's, a, you know, someone did something to you that you didn't like, right? Mm -hmm. Or that upset you. And so in communication, you know, one goal of shared reality is to, where you're both seeing the thing for what it is from each other's perspective, mm -hmm. right? Now that doesn't mean that you both agree in the end that those are the, that's, that's the final say. You could be like, yes, okay, from your perspective, this is what I see you, what you said and what you intended, and this is what happened, right? And then from your end, you know, this is what, from my end, this is what I see happened and my experience. So, but you both kind of actually, you feel that the other person understands it, right? Mm -hmm. Versus like, oh yeah, I get it, I, get, I see what you said, yeah, but you know, sorry, you know, I'm you know, uh, sorry you feel that way or kind of thing, you know? It's like, no, yeah. what's the, what's the, what's a way having both people wanting to get to a place of shared reality. Like what is mm -hmm. this experience for you? What is it for me? And then do I, do you each see the other person's experience in a genuine way? Yeah. So you're going from more of a subjective perspective between the yeah. two parties to an yeah, objective like, one. Like an, like an intersubjective, right? Like, yeah, there's like, there's oh, like the objective things like, Oh, these two people were yelling. That's objective, right? Like, right. Who is right? Who's wrong? You know, who, what feelings are they having? That's all like subjective to the person. Right. And so, mm -hmm. That's a big part of it as well. Like, yeah, getting to where like, you know, it's almost like a one phrase that we've, we, we've used is like an intersubjective meditation, mm -hmm. right? Where like, you're kind of like, you're in a conversation, but you're like exploring each other's positions and each other's worlds. Right. And it sounds kind of like, you know, dry and boring, but like in mm -hmm. the practice of it, it's pretty simple. Yeah. Right. I, I like that phrase intersubjective. I don't think I've ever heard it to be honest in practice because it's like, yeah you're still being subjective, but you're recognizing other ones, other people's subjectivity. And that helps you kind of talk to yeah, their end exactly. and what they're thinking better. Totally, man. It's a, it's, um, it's a way of just almost like I want to, like every, 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 every human wants the desire to be seen and heard and understood. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and appreciated in some way. Right. And so it's almost like extending that to the other side, even if, in a relationship, in a conflict, in an argument, or you may be having trouble understanding the other person. So it's almost like doing, doing to the other person what you want the person to do to you and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this is amazing. I think a lot of people probably had like a good amount of epiphanies listening just to this first part, but like, uh, it's a good idea. How do, how do we get there now? How do we get to that shared reality as opposed to our own independent realities? Yeah. I mean, well, there's many ways to go about it. And, 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 but the, one of the practices that I was trained in is it was called circling, you know, also known as intersubjective meditation. Mm -hmm. And in it, it's, it's basically, it's a way of the way to say it, like you're basically, you're say you and I are having a, you know, a disagreement or we don't see eye to eye on something. Right. And so mm -hmm. it's a way of me looking at you and, giving you full attention. Part of this is like a presence practice. Mm -hmm. So basically to fully, and it takes skill and capacity to, to, to build, but essentially I'm giving you attention for a period of time where you talk. And my goal is to, to understand you, mm -hmm. right? I'm not here to like interrupt you or like listen or ask you questions that, that derail the conversation and point it back to me or try to smuggle in my assertions about you and, um, in my complaints or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's really a way of like just sitting down and it, even if it's a timer, right. Or something like, Hey, for five minutes, I'm going to let you talk. And another element of it is owning your experience, 
right? So basically speaking in a way where it's not arguable. Mm -hmm. So basically like saying, oh, you made me feel, you know, angry, right? Which is that, no, that's kind of debatable in some ways, right? Like, right. how do I know what made you angry? Maybe something else made you angry. Maybe you're already in an angry state and you're angry at everything, no matter what I said, you know? Mm -hmm. um, versus, you know, like, you know, when when I heard you say that or when I heard you did that, I, I, I had a lot of anger in me, right? There's like, a, there's like an ownership of that. Like, nobody can deny that, mm -hmm. you know, that you, you, have, you had the experience of anger. Right, somebody does, and that's a whole other separate issue. They're trying to like you know gaslight you or, or or, or bulldoze you into, into thinking that you weren't having the experience you thought you had. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one example. Now, without being again like all this stuff is like just guidelines, but not necessarily. I I I'd rather people kind of be willing to be messy. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, I'd rather be clunky and messy than try to be like, oh, am I following these guidelines that Jeffrey shared? Am I am I doing this in a way that is, is following the rules, right? Right, right. So it's more of like, it's more about the connection and, and the intention. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the, that's the, those are the, those are two things, right? One is the setting the intention, the context mm -hmm. for both trying to, to, to understand each other and see each other's worlds and, and, and get that shared reality mm -hmm. as a, as a baseline. And then secondly is really doing your best to own your experience in your sharing, right? So yeah. like, and there's, It's almost like there's like there's like several ways to there's in any in any conversation between two two people there's several mm -hmm. things going on in the moment right there's there's what's going on in you that I'm observing on you there's what's going on in myself and my own inner experience and there's what's going on like in in the space between you right like there's an there's an energy there's an energy between two people usually right there right. always is something right and it's like kind of having your awareness on those things a lot of times. You know, you can, I'll be talking with someone, whether it's my wife or a friend, or, and then I'll notice myself like there's, whenever I'm talking, something's happening in them, mm -hmm. right? So kind of having the the skill and the practice and the awareness to notice, hey, I notice yourself kind of checked out, or I noticed you kind of like your energy got a little bit contracted, or I'm feeling not as connected to you in this moment. Mm -hmm. And so taking a moment to like, just pause and like zoom out and say like, hey, what's going on? Rather than try to continue to talk and kind of get your point across. Does yeah. that make sense? You know, a lot of it's social intelligence, emotional intelligence, right? It's under that mm -hmm. umbrella. Yeah, but at, at the core of it, it's basically you taking the initiative to want to understand how you're feeling and what's happening to you, for one, and then also wanting to understand what they're going through in this conversation with you as well, instead of just only worrying about yourself and the point you're making and trying to be right. Yeah, it's almost, yeah, 100%. And, it, and it's, 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 is, it, is it, you know, obviously in, in, in today's culture, right, there's a lot of this like, you know, polarization and, and wanting to be right and wanting to make the other side wrong, right? And so like this kind of practice is, is needed more than ever. Right. Um, so for me, it's one of those things where I just, yeah, there's definitely some things that we could be doing individually, collectively around, mm -hmm. around these conversations and, and, and to see, to understand the other side before we judge the other side. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, in the moment, it's hard to do. I, I get that. And, but ultimately as a practice, especially in our relationships with one, one-on-one, -on -one, right. Mm -hmm. Whether it's coworkers, your boss, friends, family, partner, that's where it all starts. I think. Yeah. Okay. I, I love that actually. Cause it, it, you know, we initially talked about your dating relationship coach for men, but yeah, this yeah. goes into each, uh, any kind of communication you try to do. Um, yes. What do you, do you feel like, you know, like you mentioned, it's hard to kind of go through this and, um, be more mindful about how you're feeling, trying to see the other side, as opposed to just looking at your side. Uh, yeah. How can you kind of slow down and give yourself a chance to do that, especially in a, like a fast-paced environment like work, for instance, or um, with someone you care yeah. about? Um, well, two things. One is I'm a big fan of, of, of setting, you know, micro boundaries, right? So like mm -hmm. if you're at work or you're at home and, and you're with your partner, like, if you need space, if your system is overwhelmed and you need a little, you know, space to kind of um, recollect yourself, get into your body, right? I'm a big fan of whatever, whatever will help you get into your body before you continue the conversation. That that is that is going to be helpful, right? Like mm -hmm. versus like being heated and like a lot of times when we're angry, energy is rising, right? So whatever can get us like grounded in our body. So whether it's a walk, whether it's doing push-ups, or whether it's just kind of just shaking it out you know, mm -hmm. dancing, whatever, to get, get you in your body, right? Go for a workout. Um, and then with any time boundary that you give to make sure that you come back, 
right? Like to don't like just, hey, I'll be back in 10 minutes and you come back later that night, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and the other one that is a huge one that I learned, you know, 10 years ago was the, the idea of context before content. Mm. And so what I mean by that is, you know, sharing the, the why and the, and, and the reason you're sharing something before you share the actual thing. So the why mm -hmm. before the what, if you will, mm -hmm. right? So like, and, and that goes both ways. You know, I know we maybe kind of talking about like conflict and bad things, but it could also be like um, positive things, appreciations, you know, sharing a positive thing about somebody. So, you know, I know in my life, I have people where they really don't receive compliments well, mm -hmm. right? And so, or when it's their birthday, they don't really don't want to be celebrated. They want the attention on them. And then so for me, one thing that I, that I, try to practice is getting their attention by setting the context. Like, Hey, I want to share something with you. I want to share an appreciation of you that really, I really want you to receive, mm -hmm. right? Just taking like 30 seconds or 10 seconds just to kind of, and getting them in that space where like, it, they just drop it in a little bit, their energy drops down and get, they get mm -hmm. present and then you share whatever it is. And nine times out of 10, it's going to land in a much different way. Right. Same thing with like, you know, you know, something negative, like say you, 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 you did something that you want to own up to, right? And you can, you know, you set the context by saying, you know, hey, there's something I want to share with you. You know, something happened yesterday that I, you know, that I did that I, I want to share with you, but I also I'm scared and I'm, I'm, I'm worried that you're going to overreact. And I just want to know that like, I'm just, I'm, I want to share this with the intention of our relationship, you know, continuing to be solid and mm -hmm. to grow connection or have our connection grow deeper. Right. Mm -hmm. So like there's that context and then you can share whatever it is. Yeah. Is I like that. It's, a, it's basically like preparing them for what you're about to say, as opposed to them being maybe caught off guard and having an emotional reaction. They're more yeah, ready I mean, to think so, about what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. It's more of like, it's kind of like to, a, to create a container for the information and the communication and connection to like be fully exchanged and received mm -hmm. in, the, in an optimal environment. Right. Versus just dropping a bomb on somebody. Yeah. Whether it's a love bomb or a, or a complaint bomb, right? Right, right, right. No, I like that a lot. Because, I mean, you could say the same sentence in two different contexts, and it'll mean two completely different things, right? So when you... Yeah, like, or, or you say something in passing, you know, mm -hmm. like, like you know, th like for gratitude, like say, for example, gratitude, you know, like, you, you know, you're, like my wife and I go, like, go back joking about this back and forth, but, you know, like, we'll do something for the other person, and then they'll say thank you, but for some reason, it wasn't received, like, either mm -hmm. I was distracted, or it was done in passing, versus, like, you know, pausing her, and looking her in the eye and be like, hey, babe, I really am so grateful for, you know, the birthday celebration you did yesterday for me. It was like just the most, I felt so seen and loved. I just want you to know that you are an amazing wife and I love you so much, mm -hmm. right? But looking into her eyes versus like just doing that in passing or driving and we're both looking out the windows. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's a difference. It's like, it's like an attention to, it's an attention, it's attention to the intention. Right. Right. Oh, I like that yeah. because then it's like in passing, the other person is thinking, man, did he even really like it? Are exactly. they actually saying thank you? Or are they just doing it because they feel like they have to say thank you? And I do thing? that. I, I tell, you know, even with, you know, with, with men and women on, on first dates, like, you know, make sure that you like actually you just give an extra 10 seconds just to kind of just genuinely thank the person, mm -hmm. you know, like, hey, thank you so much for your time. And it was so good to meet you, whether it's, you know, you want a second date or whether you don't. Either way, yeah. just give them, you know, just a heart, you know, because you know, it's another soul in front of you for one to How two to three long. hours, right? So yeah. why not give them, you know, a thank, you know, whether it goes well or not, just give them a thanks. Yeah, no, I love that a lot. So now kind of going into um, building, cultivating relationships, you want to like go further. Yeah. Um, you as a person go in with this intention of trying to understand the other person and trying to be present in yourself and know how you're feeling before you react how do you not get too caught up in thinking about those things that you're not involved in the conversation as much as you could have been so so say more like how do you how do you not get get to get get caught up in overthinking things in the moment with someone yes exactly yeah um well the first one is is is, is the breath is, is the power of the breath and it's it's one of the beauty beautiful things of about the breath is that it's silent and it's quiet and you can do that kind of stuff without you know no one notice without anyone noticing right? right so so i'm just a believer of just like just taking deep breaths whether it's just simple deep belly breaths where your belly expands like as a way of because it has a really unique way of of getting into your body 
right? Mm -hmm. At the very least, regulating your nervous system and calming you down, right? The breath. And so that's one thing. Another one that, you know, depending on, on the relationship is, is, is holding the other person's hand, mm -hmm. like having some type of like physical contact or touch while you're talking with them. That also, I think, helps regulate the system. And like you both kind of feel a connection to the other person as you're having the conversation. And again, like within obviously, you know, you have to get the other person's consent. And 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 if, if that changes in the middle of the conversation and they want to like have space from you, that's fine too, right? Like to, to, to honor that. But when possible, I think it's a very helpful experience, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's like in the moment you're talking about, right? Like in the conversation. Right, exactly. and, and, then, and then even just naming when you do get... Um, when you do get heated to like say like, hey, I'm kind of spinning out a little bit. I'm getting in my head and I want to just take a moment just to pause and kind of regroup in, in service of our connection and making this conversation productive. You mm -hmm. know, like there's like, there's the ability to like zoom in and zoom out as needed and and to name what's present. That's another, another tool, right? It's like to name what's here. Like, hey, I'm noticing there's like a, the energy is kind of funky right here, right here. Like it's kind mm -hmm. of like there's something there's some, you, I'm, I'm noticing like a closed off energy between both of us. Is, is, is that true? And then you check in, right? There's like, there's ways of, 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 and it sounds like you're kind of, you know, we're kind of micro analyzing everything, but it's really not. It's more of, I really call it like just zooming in and zooming out and just kind of in service of the connection and, and, yeah. and naming what's here, what's present. Cause most of the time, either you notice it and the other person will notice it after you name it. Or they were both noticing it and then just you naming it kind of reveals it and kind of dissipates it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I like that you use the phrase in service of the connection because everyone wants a good connection. Otherwise, you know, why would you be having this conversation with someone? Um, it's very rare you want ill intended conversation. So you doing this isn't like a micro analyzation well, or you being, go ahead. Yeah, no, totally. And, and especially like around like, I even, you know, a lot of times I just bow out of, of conversations now, especially around like the political stuff and other uh -huh. heated topics is like, cause what is the serve? What's the point of the conversation mm. is the point for, for me or the other person to just do a monologue for a few minutes and in, in service of feeling good or, you know, you know, showing how knowledgeable and how right they are, mm -hmm. or is it in service of something else? Mm -hmm. or, or is this conversation going to bring us closer? Is the conversation going to bring us, clarity are we willing to be wrong in any part of the, the the topic are we willing to expand our awareness and actually you know learn something or change something about what we're thinking like if there's no part if there's no if there's none of that then what is the point of the conversation right like what is mm -hmm. the now there's a time excuse me there's a time and a place for you know banter and you know having like political discussions and whatnot but nine times out of yeah. ten i find that they're just not productive or there's not really a clear benevolent intent on both sides or either side yeah no i hear that that's actually a really good point I even consider that that was uh because so, even though it's not necessarily ill-intended by the person um it's yeah, not I don't think it's like positively that, yeah. intended it's not positively intended at all it's more or, ego ego based it's like ego based or, or it's like it's like um just unconsciously we're just hooked into these these polarizing viewpoints and then we get you know the these these narratives and these things that just kind of get us into these conversations that we just get sucked in. And then somebody says, you know, brings up a topic or a name or a person or, or something that kind of like, Oh, that, that I hate that, you know, that person, or I hate that topic. And they like, just end up, you get sucked in and like, okay, well, what's it, especially with people that are close to you, it sucks. It hurt. It's hurtful. Yeah. Right. You know, to kind of get in these like escalating discussions about what is it really meaningful? Is this, is this topic and is this conversation really directly impacting our lives? Mm -hmm. And is it bringing fulfillment in having the conversation? Right. I like that. But now if you get sucked into that conversation and yeah. you, you recognize, you know, this isn't serving me, this isn't going to serve you at all because you're not willing to listen, for instance, how can you step out kindly without maybe uh, burning any bridges, essentially? <laughs> if it yeah. is a family member, if it is a good friend kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I would say, I mean, again, it's kind of like the reverse of content before context is I'm like, you're noticing this content and this conversation and the energy around it mm. is not really, it's like, it's kind of creating more ripples, rifts in the connections. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like, so I'm like, Hey, like, I really care about you. I really care about our friendship or our relationship. And it seems like we're kind of getting into the, the weeds here with like debating over things that really aren't 
having us doesn't really feel good right now this this conversation and mm-hmm. i'm not attached to this conversation continuing you know now if there's an, you know if you have a desire to keep talking i'm curious to hear your reasons why or if you if you want to but i'm curious if you're okay with just kind of pausing here and just agreeing to disagree or having you know our different opinions and that's okay but it's almost like focusing on the reason why you want to, you know, like you don't want to bow out because like, oh, they won the, they won the debate or I right. won the debate or they're stupid and they're never going to see my point of view. It's like, why are you bowing out of the conversation mm-hmm. or, or is it desire? Like, again, going back to naming what's present, like, hey, I'm really feeling this intense energy and I just want to like just, just get up and walk away from this conversation, but I don't want to do that because I value our connection. What, what comes up for you when I share that, mm-hmm. right? Like that's yeah. another, you know, a, th- a thing to kind of, a phrase to use in your toolbox, like, you know, what's coming up for you in this moment, you know, as, as I'm sharing this, right. Mm-hmm. With, with a genuine curiosity in the, in the answer. Right. That's the secret. Right? That's the secret. Yeah. Like to not just fake it and just kind of go through these motions and say these phrases, but like to actually, Hmm. Like, you know, I'm curious, what, you know, what, what, what is it? Cause again, like going back to the focus on the connection, what's in mm-hmm. service of the connection. I love that. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And it's always, always comes back to going in within yourself, recognizing how you feel translating that to them and coming to a mutual ground yeah and this is all a practice man it's just like it's really like a, like an ever evolving like i don't think that i'm like kind of you know uh the perfect expert and like i'm always you know saying the right thing at the right time you know but mm-hmm. i think it's a more about the practice of it and and getting just getting better and 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 you know different relationships different dynamics whether it's family or friendships or or or, or work there's going to be different um, energetic kind of variances in, in how, you know, especially when you get triggered, right? Somebody may trigger you and something may, right. they may poke at you. They may kind of say something that, that rubs you the wrong way. And then it's like, okay, well, cool. Like what's, what's here for me to like really pay attention to and, and then share from an authentic place mm-hmm. with the other no. person. Yeah, no, that's really good. So now kind of branching off of that kind of example we just went off with, um, let's say instead you're trying to communicate this to somebody um, and they're maybe a little bit offended or something just happened and they're not too happy about it. And you're trying to communicate and come to a mutual ground, but they're stonewalling you. They're not really trying to collaborate. You know, you can't control how they communicate to you. You can only control how you communicate to them. Mm -hmm. Where, where can you go in that situation from there? Well, I mean, like, I guess in a general sense, there is, you, know, you can't really have a, that kind of conversation when one person's not willing to have the conversation around, you know, repairing or coming to, um, you know, some type of understanding together, right? It's like if I'm wanting to understand you and get and get and repair things to get back to a good connection, mm-hmm. and the other person is not. Now that depends on whether that person, are, you know, you check in. Are, are you willing to have this conversation in in general, or just not right now? Mm. Right. And then it, it, I think it's just communicating, you know, a desire to have that conversation at some point and then, you know, pick a day and a time or, you know, at, at the very least have them commit to, or, you know, they agree to circle back. Hey, I'll let you know, let me just take some space. I'll come back to you in two days and I'll let you know what, what's up with me and, and let you know where I'm at. But like, that's the first piece. I think you have to have some, both people have to be, have a willingness to, to want to have the conversation. Right. Um, that's the first thing. And then, and then communicating and then communicating that desire, like, Hey, I really care about you or I really love you. And, and I want us to have this conversation to get back to a place of, of, of being connected, you know, where there's not much, there's not charges around what we're thinking about each other. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And that's, 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 that's the thing there. Yeah. I think that's really powerful. I really like that. Now, do you, there's a question I'm curious about, cause you kind of mentioned it now. And then you talked about it at the beginning, you've been doing this for t- over 10 years, right? Yeah. Uh, professionally, how has communication evolved over a ten-year period? I, I can't imagine that the same practices from ten years ago are going to apply now for how you help people. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, the main thing is is obviously texting and messaging, right? Like our attention is so dispersed now between like I probably have like ten different apps mm-hmm. people can message me, right? And so, whereas like you know when I grew up, it was like just the phone and mail, and that's it. And yeah. Email came up, you know, ten years later or whatever, but um. So for me, I think a lot gets the, a big challenge in dating in in life is 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 communication via text, right? Is 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 a lot gets lost in that, 
right? You don't get the mm-hmm. nuance, you don't get body language, you don't get voice tone, um, you don't get the immediacy of it, of of what the person's reaction, what's the, what's their genuine reaction in the moment, right? So, and so, I really am a big believer of, you know, in person, live conversations or FaceTime or you know, phone call at the very least mm-hmm. that allow to really just have more of that aliveness to the communication right and it gets rid of a lot of that gray area that you were talking about the nuance and the yeah the nuance and misunderstandings right Right. like how many times have i said sent a smiley face emoji when i really wasn't smiling or happy or whatever it's like (laughs) you know it's like it's like we get to lol and you're not yeah lol i wasn't really (laughs) laughing at all silently or otherwise yeah i am i'm rolling on the floor laughing yeah um and so yeah, like I just think it's, it's really easy. And it's really easy to kind of also like, especially in dating, right? To create a persona mm-hmm. on apps or in messaging back and forth. But like, it's a lot harder on FaceTime. You know, if you, you know, after a couple of messages back and forth, like hop on FaceTime, hop on the phone at the very least, you know, and then see if you want to then continue the conversation in person, right? But the very least, it's, it's really hard to, you know, that's where the whole catfishing comes in, right? Where you yeah. message somebody, you put up a big profile, and then it's easier to do that over text, 100% easy. Mm-hmm. But then, what's it look like when you're in person. So, and I always say the dating starts when you're face to face, when your mm-hmm. eyes are meeting their eyes in real life, right? That's all the messaging beforehand is like flirting, information gathering and logistical stuff, right? right. The, the actual connection is happening in the moment once you meet face to face. So, uh, so, yeah. So with the, like, it starts with texting and then it leads to in-person communication, like you said. Um, mm-hmm. One thing that, I don't know, I noticed, I guess, it's an observation I've had is that when you are texting, your sentences and your things can be very well thought out. You can get opinions for how this sounds and that kind of thing. Yes. But then when you're in an, a live conversation, you can't do that. You, you could really got to be off the fly. Do you recommend being, you know, trying to text the same way you would have in a conversation, like not thinking everything through or what? what's your general advice there? I mean, yeah, yeah I, I, I totally hear you. Like I, I've been there myself where I'll, you know, whether it's an email or a text message, I'll, I'll kind of, I'll compose it in notes, right? Like I'll do it mm-hmm. in notes so they can't see me typing, right? And then I'll just yeah. perfect it in notes and then I'll cut and paste it and then uh, send it um, or just be revising it, you know, 20 times in the message. Right. But, um, and so I get it. It's a human nature. Like it's a permanent thing. Like once it's sent, unless you're like, you know, have the ability to unsend it, but like if they're on the, on the app live, they're going to see it. So yeah. there's a permanency to it. Right. And so, mm-hmm. so for me, it's like, there's, I think it's calibrated to the situation, to the person, right? If it's, a, it's like, it's a business conversation, you want to kind of be mindful with your words in general, you want to be mindful, but like, you don't want to kind of be more, more thing, but like in general, it's, it's, it's and I think, one thing to ask is like, what has me, if I am feeling apprehensive about the words that I'm sharing via text, what has me being apprehensive about it? Mm-hmm. Is it because I really like this woman and I really want her to like me? Is it because I find this person is a higher status than me and like he's more successful and I want to make sure that he like sees me as a successful person. So I want to make sure my words are right. Like usually there's something underneath the desire to have the perfect words, right? That's what it is ultimately, right? To have the perfect words. And then like, right. and then underneath that is what's the outcome that I'm looking for. Like I'm wanting to say these words, but is there, a, is, am I attached to a response from this woman or from this man or from this person? It's like, mm-hmm. what, what am I, what am I, what has me being so anxious right now? And so un, unsure of myself around these words that I'm writing and typing. Mm-hmm. So I think the question is more of an introspection to kind of like look at, you know, on an ongoing way, but also in the moment, like, okay, what am I wanting here? Like, wh- I mean, I've been writing the same response 20 times. Like what's, what is, yeah. what is it about? Is it, is it the person that's triggering this, you know, activating this in me? Is it the situation? Is there something I'm wanting? Is it because we're negotiating? Like, you know, am I negotiating a used car price over text? Like, is that, you know, what is it that is it the stakes? So I think it's more of like using that as, as, as fuel for your own introspection mm-hmm. ultimately. Right. And, and yeah, I think in general, kind of, you want to feel that freedom with the people that you're close to uh, and closest to that. You can just text whatever, right. That you're not mm-hmm. going to, you know, be, yeah, you don't got a backpedal or anything walking like on eggshells. Yeah. Every single message. Yeah. Yeah. No, that'll, that's definitely ideal. I think in closest situations. Um, but then, no, that makes a lot of sense. 
I'm kind of just thinking about this and like applying it to my most recent text messages with people uh-huh. and thinking like, how did that play out the way I wanted to or not? Um, yeah, so like I, think- I mean, like imagining like you know you had you know whatever fitness person that you admire the most, right? If you had right. a chance, you got if somebody gave you his number, it's like, hey, reach out to him, you know. Um, you know, <laughs> he's going to want to have on his podcast or say Joe Rogan or whatever, let's say, yeah. you know, like, okay, well, what's the first message going to be? Right. I, I could see like, that would be natural. I would think be like, Hey Joe, what's, you know, what's up? You know, yeah. my, my, you know, John told me to message you like, no, you'd probably mm-hmm. like, you know, it would make sense. Cause there's a, there's a high level of desire, maybe even attachment to wanting him to respond and you know, whatever it is you're looking to kind of get in terms of the, out, the interaction. Right. So it makes sense. Right. Not, there's, no, there's no judgment upon it. It's just noticing it and be like, okay, cool. Just relax. You know, let's just, you know, what am I wanting here? What's the, what's the energy I want to come from in this, mm-hmm. right? In this message, in this exchange. That's a part of it too, right? Cause like how many times have I been anxious when I was single, like texting, you know, women and I'm in this anxious, needy state. And then it comes, creates right. this kind of like weird energy that kind of gets, a, comes across in the, in, on their end. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, they feel how you feel basically. Yeah. How you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So then when you recognize how you feel now, how does that influence the actions that you're going to take after that? How does that influence what you're going to say? Yeah, great question. Um, well, I think once, well, you know, there's a formula that I, that I use with, with clients and, you know, it's, I call it Ricard because that's what it spells out. But like, basically okay. like, you know, there's the results you currently have, right? Mm-hmm. Let's get some awareness around those results. Make a new choice. Take a new action. And then what are the new results, right? So like, so basically, you know, your results, your actions, your choice, sorry, results, awareness, choice, action, and results. And so like, so basically, you know, cool. I have awareness now about my anxiety around this message that I'm trying to, you know, to use the same example. I have a lot of, I have awareness now that I'm really attached to having this woman say yes to me, asking her on a date, Mm -hmm. right? Okay. What's, what do I, is it, am I, and then you have the choice. Do I want to do anything different? In how I respond, am I going to keep the same text that I have already on the screen and send that? You know, so you have a new you have a new action to, to do based on that choice or, or not, mm-hmm. and then see what happens, right? It's like experimentation, right? It's like you're course correcting as you go along. Um, so for me, the biggest thing is like, yeah, like is there with the awareness that you have in in that little pause, is there a choice you want to make, mm-hmm. right? That's different, and then and then again, trusting yourself that like, hey, no matter what I say, it'll be fine. I'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. It'll it'll go well. It'll not go well. It'll be neutral, and I'll choose differently next time. Right, you're still going to be alive. You're still going to have another chance in the future. Yeah, with, exactly. maybe with someone else, maybe with the same person, but you'll have another chance. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, but I feel like you know, for a lot of people, they get caught up in this has to be the one. I need this right now, and they forget to zoom out, like you mentioned earlier. Forget the, the zoom in, zoom out practice. How, where, where do you go after that? You know, they they can't imagine anything but this kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, like when you're really attached to an outcome. Yeah, like using the Joe Rogan instance. Like I was going to yeah. be on Joe Rogan's podcast. Like, man, that's like the biggest thing you could ask for. How how can I not want to mess this up? And uh, when it doesn't go the way I want it to, how do I cope with that? How do I respond after that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's just that's just as your own person, each person's personal growth journey, right? To so like what what are your own personal. Um, what are your own personal things inside of you that cause, you know, what do you, if somebody could be like, oh, I'm anxious about being on, you know, Joe Rogan's podcast because I may say something dumb and I may, you know, people might, people may be canceling me and I'll be like, you know, have no business next, next month. Right. 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 Or I don't want to, you know, look, look stupid or I don't, you know, it could be, it could be many things. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's looking at what is your, what are you most, what's, having the self-awareness and slowing down practice to know what is it, what's coming up in me? Like, is it anxiety? Is it fear? Is it, um, you know, judgment, you know, whatever it is that that's causing me to kind of hesitate or be hyper focused on, on thinking things here, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And then going off of that, basically learning for next time, um, how to be better or that kind of where you're going with that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing is like, it's always improving, like learning, you yeah. know, course, correct. You know, like you have your results, you're, you're, you're taking action, you're, tr- you're course correcting as you go along and you see what's working and what's not working. And okay. then part of the awareness gathering step is many times you can only do so much on your own. 
right? So whether mm -hmm. maybe sometimes it's reading a book, sometimes it's hiring a coach, sometimes it's getting a therapist, a mentor to help you get awareness, right? Because a lot of times if you're not being able to make new choices or take new actions, you kind of have an awareness issue, right? You're mm -hmm. having, you can't see your own blind spots. And so that's where I think, you know, getting outside support, if that's needed to get awareness, to get some perspective on, hey, where am I? And, and, and do I need to pivot? Do I need to take the same actions, do more of the same? What is it that I need to do differently, right? So that's a big, and then, but the first step before that is like really getting an honest, clear perspective of the current results you've had, mm -hmm. right? Which are the result of your previous choices and actions and awareness, right? Mm -hmm. And then if things aren't changing, then you don't have a, enough awareness. Again, you're not looking at your blind spots because obviously you can't see them, they're blind spots. Yes, to yeah. Do that on your own. Yeah, man. But that's a... It's always, I feel like the hardest thing to kind of accept is recognizing like I am a, basically I'm a human and I can't, I don't know everything about me as much as I'd like to know about me kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I think the, the trap of like the ego, right. Or us, or, or, or our personalities that like, we want to, we don't, we're kind of taught and trained to like, not want to look stupid. Yeah. Right. Or to look ignorant or to look like we don't have all the information or all the answers. And I think that's, I think, you know, the people that, you know, tend to be most successful, I, I would say like they, they are okay with beginner's mind, right? They're okay mm -hmm. with, um, with looking foolish or, or failing a lot in the beginning. Right. So like, for me, it's like, like I have, a, I'm kind of wanting to like practice it like a new sport. Like I never was really athletic as a kid. I was kind of more nerdy and I did track, but that's kind of an easy, pretty sport to, to do. Yeah. Um, but, um, or yeah. An easy sport simple. to kind of practice, right? Yeah, simple. Right. simple it doesn't right? need yeah. skill. Yeah, yeah. Like a basketball um, then, or something like that. Totally. And so for me, like, I want to maybe, like, play a new team sport, right? But, like, but as an adult, you know, like, I'm 44. Like, so, like, it's a different animal. Like, a lot of times you go to play sports, like, they, they used to play as a kid or teen or, or former college athletes or, mm -hmm. you know, semi-pro. And, like, they just want to kind of keep the skill up. And so you're competing against these guys. You're never going to see the ball. You know, yeah. you're never going to get the... So, so learning like a sport, it's like, so having the humility to be like, Hey, I'm an adult man learning a brand new sport. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm, I have to be okay with that. It's been my own kind of like just challenge of like, Hey, is it okay for me to look stupid as an adult guy kicking a soccer ball around or yeah. basketball or baseball, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, it is, you just yeah, gotta be, is, you yeah. just gotta be and okay I, with it. <laughs> and I have to, and I have to be right. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I love that. I, I always, you know, growing up, I was always like the smart kid in school, you know? So okay. anytime I was in a conversation, I didn't know what was happening. I was like, I still got to pretend to look smart, man. I, I'm the smart guy. I got to keep up this yeah. persona that I have. Um, and I'll just say yes to things or even commit to things. That I had no idea what I was doing, you know, projects and things like that through college. But more recently, the last three years or so, I've kind of started this practice where if I don't know what is happening, I don't know what this topic that is being discussed, I'll ask the person, what is that? What does that mean? Why is this relevant? And, you know, it was weird at first because I felt like, uh, like spotlight syndrome, essentially felt like, like, damn, he's being seen as this dumb person right now. He doesn't know what this is, but um, I'm able to learn what it is at that moment. And then um, I recognize like, hey, it wasn't actually that bad. It's okay to get the answers you need when you, when you get them. Um, and people are always more than happy to share that with you. No one actually makes fun of you as much as you think they're going to or anything like that. Yeah. And that's a great, just also a reminder of like, just that's how conversations really flow. Like the conversations, are, the most fulfilling conversations are the ones where like, usually the other person's asking about you, mm -hmm. right? Like you at, you know, people love to talk about themselves. They like to talk about like, and share things. And it's a great way to learn. Like, instead of like saying like, oh, you voted for this person. I'm going to project all these things about you, right? Why not play dumb and be like, Hey, like, you know, tell me more. Like, what has you thinking this way? Or where'd you, how did you come to this conclusion? Or what's your, what do you think are the benefits of, of this thing that you believe in? Like, you know, like mm -hmm. whatever it is, like using that as, as a source of conversation rather than, you know, a two, divisive matter. Yeah. Or just two people talking to them, just monologues competing for time, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a another side benefit of that. Right. Right. Yeah. I like the visual of two monologues competing for time. I kind of see two people on stage that are just talking really <laughs> loud and the spotlight I mean, look at cable, to turn to. Look at cable news, man. That's what it is, yeah. right? It's a shouting A lot match. of the time. Yeah, they're just two squares on the screen, just like us right now, but they're just... Yeah, but at least we're like having a, a dialogue, right? Like versus yeah. monologue. And, and the other thing is, yeah, like that's what I think is sorely needed. And again, like I said, collectively and, just, and also on, on a individual 
basis is just you know these kind of like more slowed down and nuanced conversations the ability to kind of like see different perspectives mm -hmm. yeah. in a real way right not just like oh yeah i see i, I know about that side of the i know the other the other the, the other argument but i still think you're stupid right yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's like a, the illusion of having awareness on the other side yeah basically yeah, yeah. yeah so i mean i love that because i think i do think it's really valuable to just be willing to care you know i think that's an underappreciated aspect of all of this is you actually want people to be interested in the other side of the conversation um, because otherwise you're not going to have a real authentic conversation um, but you know i think a lot of people might not just care about other people in general is caring something you learn to do or how how can you get better at that being interested essentially interesting yeah good, good question is yeah is caring a, a, can you learn how to care i mean <laughs> I mean, I think I mean, there's definitely an element of like personality into that, right? There's like, you know, who you, how you right. grew up and how you were raised and, and, and what you're interested in and all that stuff and level mm -hmm. of, there's also an element of like, you know, your level of self-love, you know, for yourself, you know? Um, and, but I think I would say whether someone does care or not in a genuine way, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to like gauge, right? But like, mm -hmm the skill of expressing that care is definitely think, something that can be honed in on and learned, right? Like how mm -hmm. to express how much you care for someone, learning how to receive how much you care from the other person in a way. So they feel like their, their compliment or their, their appreciation was, was, was fully received by you. Yeah. Right. Like those are things that I think learning how to, um, what are the different parts of the of of the other person that you can want to explore and care about right and then also like how is that even demonstrated right like you know whether it's something about love languages or um you know how do how do they like to be cared for and then honoring that and listening to that mm -hmm. i love that okay that's really that's really helpful i feel like because then again it comes back to being present in what is happening and then analyzing and course correcting. Yeah, I mean, in, in a simplified way, yeah. 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 It's like, yeah, presence is, is obviously the first and foremost in anything, right? Whether it's a workout or whether it's a, a conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about this. This is, this is just really good. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's cool. I'm glad, I'm glad yeah. it's sparking stuff. Yeah, no, I appreciate this a lot. Because again, it's like, I'm always trying to be a better communicator, speak better, do gooder with my words kind of thing you know what yeah. i mean um and do you do you think do you think and do you find any value in kind of visualizing these events before they happen so like in anticipation of possibly having a poor conversation with someone that could be received badly mm -hmm. do you encourage people to you know what would you do in this situation just so they can kind of have a little bit of experience and be more prepared for it or do you think it's not as valuable as the real thing um, no, I, I, I think I would say it's a combination of visual visualization and surrender. Okay. Right. So visualize, you know, the best outcome, like, you know, I'm, I'm intending for this conversation to go really as well as possible for, you know, us to, you know, repair what needs to be repaired, become deeper in our connection. If not now, then soon. Mm -hmm. And I'm also open to being pleasantly surprised and I'm surrendering to what is supposed to happen is going to happen. Right. Like there's almost you kind of like you're you're showing up fully you know and also set the intention to like i'm going to show up fully with my mind and body and heart and and share how much i care about this person and 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 want to get through this conversation mm -hmm. right versus you know a lot of times people we just avoid it right avoid the conversation completely which causes its own ripple effects of negative right we avoid it because surrender is scary in a lot of instances Right, yeah, or, or even just conflict is scary, right? Like, oh, I don't right. want to have that person yell at me or be mad at me, or I don't want mm. to, I don't want to be mad at them and and you know and, and say something that that hurts that hurts them. Yeah, yeah. But then at some point, it's just gotta you gotta do it. Otherwise, again, like you said, it's a uh, domino effect of bad bad things that lead after that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, for avoidance of anything kind of creates its own. A pattern you get the you get the short term benefit of not having the discomfort or the or the conflict, but then you have the long term effect of you know whatever the effects are, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. it's, <laughs> it's a different every time, but yeah, it's not a good one. No, <laughs> yeah. no I like that. That's good. Okay, so now um, 
we I kind of want to circle back to actual the dating and relationship aspect of things. Sure. Um, because you know, as you go through several dates, um, the connection between you and the person changes. It evolves as your relationship yeah. evolves, right? So the communication is going to have to evolve to some degree as well as you guys get closer. Um, do you see it as being significantly different than the basics of being present and being willing to empathize and understand the situation or uh, their perspective rather? Um, or is it kind of something else entirely as this person becomes more accustomed to you and what you're like and uh, knows a little more of your background? Um, I would say it's a great question. And, and, and for me, like, yes, I think, you know, I've been, I've been with my wife, you know, over seven years now and married for five. And so it's definitely you, it's a journey. Uh, again, like I think the context of what a relationship is, is matters. Mm -hmm. So what are both people, what are both partners viewing the relationship as? Is it something to a source of just pleasure and joy and fun and that's it? And, or is it, a, or for me, the ideal frame is, you know, a source of, you know, yes, all those things. And it's also a source of growth and partnership and growing together individually, you know, grow, growing per, personally and growing as a couple, right? There's mm -hmm. that. And if you're a family or if you have a business or you have, you know, something that you're shared, like rippling that growth into the community. Like, well, how is your partnership serving the world and serving the community, right? Um, and serving the world. Mm-hmm. I think that 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 frame I think is important, right? Because then that's going to in, indicate how you deal with conflict, how you deal with things that come up, right? Um, and and so for me, like, yeah, I think in the first, you know, one to two to three years, that's of the relationship, that's where things are going to come up, right? And they'll come up after that too. But I'm just saying, like, that's the that's the the foundation. So like, learning tools and traits, learning tools and techniques on how to navigate those is important, right, for mm -hmm. any couple. Um, and also obviously choosing the right partner, you know, to, to begin with, right. That's, that's the first right. thing. Um, so I would say like, yeah, like the, the, it does evolve and over time. And then obviously as you get to know the person more, like you can one appreciate more things about them, but also more things come up to use as kind of daggers in, in fights. You know what I mean? Like you get to like, you know, say things and, and, and use them as ammo. Right. So right. against the other person for better, or for worse. And so I think that's where I think the skill of of repairing after conflict is really important. The skill of, you know, being able to own your experience and communicate clearly and cleanly as possible in the moment mm -hmm. um, is important, um, as well as doing things, you know, to create that solid foundation um, in the relationship. So your 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 relationship feels like a safe, um, safe space, a safe home for you to resort to, not a place you want to avoid and not come home to. If that makes right. sense, both figuratively and like emotionally, right? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, I, I love what you said. That's actually really powerful. I just got married like a month ago. So yeah, congrats, uh, man. That's awesome. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. So this is uh, all being absorbed right now. What's but, your wife's name? Uh, Reem. Reem, nice. Yeah. So um, on that note, though, I was going to say, hypothetically, this isn't my situation, so I don't want anyone <laughs> to think that. Uh, if you do have a shaky foundation that's been built over like four or five years, for instance, yeah. like you're five years deep into a marriage, foundation is really bad but you recognize like i still enjoy the core of this person but these bad behaviors and habits that we've kind of gone through with communication has made it hard for us to keep going how can you take the steps to repair that again uh, with assuming both people want to do that as well yeah i mean that's number one obviously making sure that both partners are wanting that and, and are committed to doing the work and then also expecting that it will take work right if there mm -hmm. is years of, of 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 that and 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 also it could be it could come to know that it'll take work but it may not take as much time as you think right it may take a lot of time but like right. be open to it wow we could have some breakthroughs we can have some you know reconnections in, in in some ways that we never thought possible right with the right mm -hmm. you know support with the right mentor you know with the right kind of method of modality um that's how i would say well I, I would say but yeah and i would say don't try to do it alone Right. Mm -hmm. Get a really good therapist, you know, get a good like relationship, um, you know, counselor or coach yeah. and, and just, and, and just be all in to make it work and mm -hmm. just to the point where like, Hey, we're going to go all in to make it work. And if at whatever time period we've done all the work to be, to be like, I never, I've never been a fan of like a relationship staying together just to stay together. Mm -hmm. Right. If, 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 
if their souls, if their paths are fully complete and you've really exhausted everything and there's a, there's like a knowingness in, in one or both of you that like you've done everything you can, but just, just something is not, then that's, that's okay. Like to not let longevity of relationship be the, the marker of success or not. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I like, I like, there's two things I want to point out that you said, that I think are very valuable in multiple aspects. One is like the idea of having the expectation that this, this is going to be hard. It's going to take work because I yeah. think the other way around, you're going to find so much disappointment and it's just going to make it so much harder to overcome because you thought it would yeah. be easier than this. Um, and then two, you know, which you've mentioned a few times already is getting a coach because I think like coaches are the kind of the step stool. I don't know. I can't think of a good analogy right now, but the stepping thing that stone, takes you yeah. stepping stone, that takes you to the next level really elevates things because when you get that outside eye looking in, um, you are able to smooth things out so much faster. Like I always like to imagine it as uh, me watching a TV show. I always know what's happening on both the A story and the B story of the TV show. Mm-hmm. And like yeah, this yeah. guy is so stupid for not doing this, but the other guy doesn't even know what's happening. You know, yeah, yeah. that's I feel that's how I feel coaching is is seeing. Yeah, dude, that's a great metaphor. Of those. I like that. Yeah, made up for the analogy I didn't get earlier. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I think it's like something most more people should be taking advantage of is having um accountability in that sense having yeah, uh, someone coach, show you those mentor, things mentor therapist i had a therapy session yesterday and and it was great it's fucking awesome and so for me it's like and i think don't especially around relationships mm-hmm. i mean most things i would say like don't try to get it from your family mm-hmm. right cuz there's 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 there, there's there's an investment in whether they're an invested in you staying together or not staying together you know what I mean? Like, they're, they're just, unless they have a happy relationship, they're not going to know, they're not trained to know the nuances of what your particular dynamics are, nor right. will you maybe feel as fully vulnerable um, sharing everything, right? Especially like if you're, if you're talking about a couple situation, like I'm, I, I would doubt that both people in the partnership are going to feel comfortable opening up to their mother in law or their. Right. <laughs> sister-in-law or you know whatever it is yeah and so that's why like having a third party with, with you know full confidentiality and, mm-hmm. and no stakes. space that's outside of yeah no stakes in it they're not attached to whether you stay together or not they just really want you to be fully fully invested in in in, in the effort to repair and reconnect yeah no that's amazing right? that's super powerful right yeah you had look like you oh, want no, to say I was just saying that, that, that's, oh, okay. that's yeah that's and also i think you know like take your time to find the right one and then, the, mm. the, but the, beware of the trap to be always. Oh, there's something about this person that I don't like, right? The, beware of the trap of perfectionism and trying to find the perfect coach or the perfect therapist, right? But like, right. again, like just take action and course correct, right? Like, mm-hmm. okay, cool, we've done a couple of sessions with this one, not really feeling the connection, you know. And I would say, like, if you're talking about a couple scenario, then make sure that both partners are are a yes to that person, mm. right? Because right. if like if if one partner doesn't trust the other, the therapist or the coach, then it's really hard to kind of get buy-in, right? Mm-hmm. No, of course. Um, Just like with any major decision you're going to oh, make. And, and the last couple. thing, yeah. And the last thing I would say is like, even if both partners are not willing, say like one partner is not willing, but then then one partner that wants to get help should get help mm. regardless, right? Like don't like say, oh, my partner doesn't want to do couples therapy. So I guess I'm screwed. I guess we have to wait until he turns around, but like, or she turns around like, no, go get therapy yourself. Yeah. Even even with that, even if you both get couples care therapy, also get your own help, right? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it helps because you're both a part of the same equation. You got to yes. take part. Yeah, yeah. Part of that. Awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, this has been such a fantastic conversation. Definitely, uh, yeah. I think, valuable to everyone that was listening. I know we're coming to the end of our time. So I want to give the mic to you, see if, you know, people are interested in what you offer and what you're doing. Where can they find more of your work and what you do? Yeah, thank you, man. First off, thank you for having me on the show. It's been great. I, you're really good at uh, just asking the questions, like the follow up. I really, I was kind of like always excited to kind of see what follow up questions you were going to ask. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you for having me. And yeah, just basically go to my website, jeffreyplatz.com. That's J E F F R E Y P L A T T S dot com. Mm-hmm. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook. Just type in my name, and you'll find me there. Um, I post pretty much daily if not multiple times a day on there just nice. sharing nuggets of wisdom around relationships and dating primarily um and yeah and if you're a woman you'll probably get nuggets in there as well it's not just it's designed for men but it's not exclusively for men if that makes right. sense yeah so um yeah so just yeah just hit me up on there and i'm uh, you know i have 
I do one-to-one coaching. I have a group program that I'm launching soon and um, I do virtual, you know, so you don't, you don't have to be here in San Diego where I live. You can be anywhere in the world and, and, and we can, I can support you. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And then for anyone that is interested, that is linked in the show notes for you, quick access to check it out. Um, awesome. Okay, quick access to check that out. Um, and then the last question for you, this is the Not So Stupid Podcast. We focus on simplicity in improving your everyday life. What is one simple thing that anyone listening can do as soon as they're done listening to this podcast that can dramatically improve their relationship, their life, or anything? Good question, man. Um, yeah, a simple thing you can do right now. I guess the one thing that comes up for me right now is, you know, think of somebody that you've been wanting to hear from that you haven't heard from in a while. And then you reach out to them first. Hmm. Like, who is it that you've been missing? And, you know, like, oh, I haven't, I, they've been popping up in my mind or I haven't talked to them in ages and just, just call them, you know, hmm. text them, call them, whatever. And just kind of like, instead of, waiting because I would, I would play that game myself just like wait for somebody to reach out to me but like reach out first you know because if you're thinking of, if they're thinking of you're thinking of them they might be thinking of you too right so yeah so hopefully yeah. this inspires at least one rekindling of a friendship or yeah. relationship of some sort yeah and again no, this is not applied to one. this is not applied to an ex that has uh <laughs> no contact Right, just so anybody that has a, uh, don't come back to me and say Jeffrey told me to reach out to you, babe. Yeah. I want to get back together. I'm not talking about that per se, but yeah. um, anything else, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> start, start, start closer. Start with mutual friends, kind of yeah, thing. Start with yeah, start with a friend. <laughs> All right, nice. I appreciate that. That's actually a great one, and I'm, I'm going to put that into effect right after this, honestly. Cool. So cool. Yeah, great. Uh, well, thank you again, Jeffrey, for your time. Again, very appreciate the conversation. I learned a lot. I know that people listening learned awesome. a lot. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, man. This was great. Yeah, happy to be on here and, and appreciate the time. Yeah, no, of course. And then for everyone listening, thank you for listening, and we will see you guys on the next episode.